Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. Got the whole family with me. Hey, hey y'all. Salam. What are we looking at today? We are looking at the yearly celestial calendar clock. The world's first celestial clock. Mm-hmm. At least the first one under production because you're ready to sell this one in your tea shop, ain't you, Stacey? Yeah, we actually have already gotten quite a few sales already. Well, we have to apologize for those who received the first ones. Theirs didn't come in quite as good of packaging as this one. Mm -hmm. You want to show it to them, Stace? Yeah. So this is the celestial clock. This clock will tell us the seasons, the months, as well as the hours. One of the greatest things um, about this clock is that it was created by this channel, right? Yeah, this idea was given to us, Christian and I, and we were able to figure out the relationship between our wall clocks and the celestials. And praise our Father in Heaven, we were able to go ahead and build the very first clock that will track the moon as well as the year. And... Even in less than a month, we're now in production mode and are now distributing these through your tea company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So once they go to the um, tea company, they will um, find the celestial clock there. Yeah, so you guys can purchase this over there. And just so you see how it works, you see your three hands here. But what's different is that what you used to recognize as your second hand when you receive your clock, you'll notice that it's moving very slowly. It actually is going to take it 12 hours to make it all the way around the clock. So that's actually your hour hand now. Then you have the minute hand, which seems to be pointing over there to the two. But if you look under it, it's actually pointing to a five, saying that we're on day five. That's your moon hand. That hand takes a month to go all the way around. And it is a good indicator to let us know when our Sabbath days are, as well as our new moons and feast days. All right. So I see that we have the Sabbath. And you mentioned that it tells us the new moon. But what are there are other features of this clock, right? Well, you see a wealth of information on the clock. It's actually telling us the sunset time. It's telling us uh, when the sun enters particular gates. You see there, we are in gate three, approaching gate four. And that hour hand, which actually is the hand that tracks the stars, is telling us that we're in the third gate and we'll be entering the fourth gate about March the 20th. And those circles that you see, those are the phases of the moon for the particular day of the month. Right. There is a lot of information on here, but it's pretty easy to work. Mm -hmm. And it's based off of the Enoch calendar? Yes, this clock was completed, praise our Father in heaven for his word, from instructions given in the book of Enoch in his book of the revolutions of the luminaries of heaven. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who would like to purchase this clock, as well as the other products that we have on the website, you can stop by and visit us and shop with us at www.thebombandtheblend.com You will find information in the show notes below. And we appreciate you guys supporting that tea company because in doing so, you actually support this channel. So what time is it telling us? Well, you have the hour hand, which is telling us that it's almost 1015. Okay. Now that would be the sun hand. That hand represents the sun. Then you have the moon hand, which tells us that we're on the fifth day of the lunar month, or the fifth day of the moon. We have a Sabbath day coming up, you can see on the eighth day, as we do with every moon. And then you see that the star hand is telling us that we are in the third gate, approaching the fourth gate, which is telling us that we're approaching the equinox, so we're in the twelfth month. So what this is telling us is that we're in the 12th month, the fifth day of the month, at about 1015. So the Feast of Pern is fast approaching us. That's right. It's next week, and you have some other biblical dates in the 12th month. So you want to go tell them about that? Now, as far as the 12th month is concerned, there's a lot of things going on. 
like for instance, you read about how King Jehoiakim was released during the 12th month. Right. We see that in 2 Kings and in Jeremiah chapter 52. And when we come to the book of Jasher chapter 83, we see that it was in the 12th month that Moses took Aaron and his sons and put the linen garments on them. Mm -hmm. That's when they got anointed before the consecration that you see there in verse 2. Right. That happened on the 23rd day of the 12th month. Right. Many people may not have heard of those events in the 12th month, and they may not realize that the flood was ending there with Noah in the 12th month. Okay. You kind of got to do a little bit of math there looking in the verses, but when you see down in verse 5 that the water started decreasing on the 10th day of the 10th month. Mm -hmm. Well, you remember the classes we did on the 10th day of the 10th month. Right. Right. The end of Jacob's trouble. Yes. That was also around the time that we started getting revelations about this new celestial clock. Right. I thought that was interesting. But when we look in verse 8, we see that it was 40 days after the 10th day of the 10th month that Noah opened the window of the ark. Mm -hmm. So that happens in the 12th month. Right. What's even more interesting is, is that when you do the math on that, you find that that's on the 15th day of the 12th month. Mm -hmm. Well, that's right after Purim. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at it. Now, I would advise you guys to read the whole book of Esther. Right. Matter of fact, you've just listened to our version of the book of Esther, which has the Apocrypha blended in. Yes. What did you think about that? Um, I think it actually uh, brought the the story home a little bit uh, better as far as I got a lot more understanding of exactly uh, some of the questions that I had. Yeah, it's a lot more. It's, the story seems a lot different after you hear the whole story. Right. Mm -hmm. um, those apocryphal verses really need to be added back into the story to get an understanding of the book of Esther. And you guys can check out that video we did. We'll give you guys a link to it so you can check out that book. But we're looking here for the timing of the Feast of Purim. And so let's come down to Esther chapter 9 and let's read verse 19. Okay. Verse 19. Therefore, the Jews of the villages that dwelt in the unwalled towers made the 14th day of the month Adar a day of gladness and feasting and a good day and of sending portions one to another. So here is the timing. It's on the 14th day of the month. Right. And it's actually telling us how we are to celebrate. Yes. The mm -hmm. feast. Mm -hmm. Right. You see there in verse 20 that Mordecai sent some letters out to King Ahasuerus. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that's actually the same as King Artaxerxes. Okay. But look at verse 21. 21. To establish this among them that they should keep the 14th day of the month Adar and the 15th day of the same yearly. Now, the 15th day of the Sabbath day. Okay. So you'll be sending out your portions of food on the 14th mm -hmm. preparation day. Right. And then, of course, you'll rest on the 15th. Mm -hmm. of the month. Right. Go ahead and read verse 22. As the days wherein the Jews rested from their enemies and the month which was turned unto them from sorrow to joy and from mourning into a good day that they should make them days of feasting and joy and of sending portions one to another and gifts to the poor. Now another video um, that I'd like to reference is the video we did on the relationship between Purim and the other feast days mm -hmm. and how they play out on the Father's timeline as okay. far as eschatology goes. And it turns out Purim is the last feast. The last feast. Right. This is the kind of the one that we're expecting around the time of the uh, kingdom age or the apocalypse or something like that. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we can imagine it being an apocalyptic type of event surrounding these Purim events. Um, similar to what happened back there in the days of Mordecai. Right. But the difference is now is we're killing them with joy and we're killing them with happiness. Right. And we're giving to the poor. This is actually a yearly event. You read verse 27. The Jews ordained and took upon them and upon their seed and upon all such as joined them unto them. So as they should not fail, 
that they would keep these two days according to their writings and according to their appointed time every year. So this is something that we're supposed to continue on. This is a post-exilic feast, like the Feast of Hanukkah or Dedication. Yeah, it was a feast of celebration. You know, Haman had tried to kill them, and through the, the writings of this letter from the king, they were now released. They have just came out of actually fighting for their lives and now it's a celebration yeah absolutely and we celebrate it every year mm -hmm. um, it's a time of joy um, but it is pointing it is a shadow of things to come right you know? if you would read verse 28 and that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation every family every province and every city and that these days appearance should not fail from among the Jews nor the memorial of them perish from their seed. So this is a celebration. This is something that we do, a joyous occasion. Nobody should have a problem, you know, having joyous feast days with our father, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Well, let's find out exactly when it is. Now, I will reference our blowing of the trumpet back on the 3rd of March. Right. That's when we got to see the sliver of the moon appear in the sky there at about 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. here on the hillbilly homestead yeah we was actually thinking that we were not going to see it but we did absolutely we did and we even got several confirmations from some of our viewers from around the world mm -hmm. and when we come over to the website truthofyahweh.org we can see even their followers reported saying that the new moon on the 3rd of March. Right. So that would have made the 4th of March new moon day yes. or the first day of the month. All right. So looking over at our calendar here, if the first day of the 12th month started on the evening of March the 3rd, then the 14th day of the 12th month will begin the evening of March the 16th. Okay. So Google got it right this year. So Purim will start on the evening of March the 16th, which will begin the 14th day of the month. Mm -hmm. So this will be the time that we'll be sending gifts to one another and as well as the be sending portions to our neighbors and stuff, right? But we can remember that it's also about that time that Noah sent out the raven that we read there in Genesis chapter eight. Mm -hmm. And then it was a few days later that he sent out the dove. Right. Well, just like Purim, I believe these dates have a greater significance in the eschatology. However, I believe we still got a couple of years to see their fulfillment. Right. Mm -hmm. But we'll be ready just in case. We'll be ready on watch just in case it is 2022. Right. And we'll be keeping these feast days according to what we read here, doing the best that we can, of course, praying for one another. And in the meantime, y'all pray for us. So what does this look like on the clock? Well, we'll still be in the third gate. The only difference is, is our moving hand will move down to about the 14th. Okay. So that's what our clocks will look like. We see up there at the top that the sun sets about 1554 around March the 12th. Okay. So our sun hand will be pointing almost around 6 o'clock. But our moon hand will be pointing to the 14th, and our star hand will still be in the third gate. So that's what we'll look like when the Feast of Purim starts. So that's a great way for us to find out all the information that we need to know about the different feast days um, just by having this clock. Well, absolutely. And plus, the days of remembrance is when we calibrate the clock every three months. So it keeps us right on point with the Celestials almost down to the second using a battery it's an easy way to learn or have the information right there at hand and gives us a heads up on when the new moon days are coming when our feast days are coming and gives us an idea of when our sabbath days are yeah for so for those of you who are like me sort of um iffy about when the dates start this is this is the tool that you need and for people like me looking on cloudy days like this when we don't have a sun to show us a shadow we have a representation of the celestials that we can go by until we start to see those signs in the sky again. Mm -hmm. So you guys rush over to thebombandtheblend.com. Mm -hmm. And get your clock. And is this a shameless plug for us? <laughs> no, not necessarily because you remember in the last video we told them how to make it themselves. Right, right, right. So if you don't want to make it, you can buy it.
We'll help you out with the faceplate over there at thebombintheblend.com or the description of this video. Mm -hmm. So, Coach, I have a really good idea. What if we, for the Feast of Purim, send to our first 20 subscribers that sent us in their name and address to in the fight at yahoo.com a free sample packet of our most popular tea blend this is the anxiety relief tea blend it's very yummy and it really does relieve stress so all you have to do is send in your name and your address to in the fight at yahoo.com and we'll get the tea blend off to you this is our gift to you our first 20 subscribers for the feast of Purn. We love you guys so much. And with that, we'll say shalom. Peace and safety until your home.